What's going on folks, my name is Alex from Part Time First Time. In this video, we're gonna cover the ACFT. If you wanna hear the official ACFT uh, details and the latest update, there's a great app. I don't know what it's called. What is the app called? I think it's just called ACFT. There's a link on, um, on army.mil, the Army Combat Fitness Test Overview, and there you can actually download the shortcut to your phone and have it as an app icon and it takes you to the website. And that is the most up-to-date information on what's going on with the ACFT. And let me tell you a little secret. Folks who went to the ACFT training in January of 2019 got one set of guidance. Folks that went in July of 2019 got a different set of guidance. There were many changes to the ACFT just during that six month period. For example, initially we were supposed to be doing the T push-ups. Then at some point in time, it was changed to the release push-ups. We no longer needed to do the T. As of July of 2019, you now need to do the T push-ups again. So, and this may change again. Also, we have several alternate events that are under review that are not yet official, but it's there. So, as you know, the APFT consists of six events. You have to get a go on those events for you to pass the ACFT. If you fail any of those events, you fail the ACFT just like the APFT. The deal with that is that a couple of those events, you have multiple attempts, such as the deadlift, the ball throw, and that's pretty much it. The ball throw, you technically have three attempts because you have a practice throw that's not measured, and then you have two attempts. And within those two attempts, you have multiple faults. Right here, you, what you're looking at is the, the scorecard that still does not have an army nomenclature, but it's the Army Combat Fitness Test scorecard uh, it does reference 7-22, even though 7-20-22 hasn't been updated. Going on to the scorecard, simple but detailed. It, obviously the date, your pay grade, your MOS. It's relevant because the Army is still trying to figure out whether you, you will be required to perform at the different levels based off your MOS or unit of assignment. So that's why your MOS is important right now. So this, this scorecard, which is not official yet, may change. Also your age, age is only relevant for your height, weight, and body fat. So that's the reason why it's on there. Then it's your name, your gender. Once again, the gender is only for your height, weight, and your body tape, your tape. So that's why it's on there. And obviously your organization comes up next. Then it's your body composition here. Once you complete the ACFT and you complete that, that portion. And then it goes down into the events. The first event is a deadlift. Deadlift is pretty straightforward. It, you basically have bars set up, pre-set up by the graders and by the facilitators of the ACFT. The soldier performing the task is not authorized to change weights on the bar. The reason for that is because the army does not want you to be lifting weights right before you are about to be graded on lifting weights. So the facilitators are the ones required to be changing the weights of the bar if the bars that are set up does not have the weight that you select as the testee that you want to attempt to lift. You get uh, two attempts to lift the weight. Uh, you also get prior to that, you get a warm up session where you can walk up to any bar of your choosing or any weight of your choosing and practicing lifting the weight. And then you get a certain amount of time to practice your lift then you have the first official lift. This is the only event in the ACFT that you can have five greatest soldiers uh, for one lane. After that, the max is four. So you get your first attempt of the weight of your choice. You lift the weight. Uh, if you are happy with the weight that you lifted at that attempt, you are good to go. You don't have to complete your second attempt. However, if you feel you can go higher or if you had a failed first attempt because you were too high and you want to come lower, you have a second opportunity to do that. As you're lifting the weight, uh, you are required to have your hands firmly on the bar. You may slide your hands on the hexagon, but you cannot release your hands from the hexagon. When you lift the weight, you are required to make three continuous motion up, down, up, down, up, down. At no moment can you rest in a down position other than for a brief second to readjust your hands. And then two, you cannot drop the weight, otherwise that attempt will be a failed attempt. Other than that, you can only be stopped in your attempt 
if the grader sees that you are, uh, sees that there's a safety concern with your attempt, may stop you and say, hey, you might wanna consider going down in weight. The way that you're lifting this bar right now is unsafe and you need to uh, maybe go down in weight. The next event here is the standing power throw. It is absolutely, positively a techniques game. If you take out core body strength and the ability to throw a ball out of the equation, it is definitely technique because the day that I took it during my level two certification, there were people that have taken it before that didn't appear to be very strong in their core and upper body to be throwing the ball very far, but nevertheless they did. And the reason for that is because they understood the technique or they have taken the ACFT before. And then there were dudes that were pretty large that I thought was gonna be throwing that ball like a hundred yards and you know, only threw it as far as I did, which I performed pretty poorly on that event. Definitely practice for that event. Not that you shouldn't practice for the other events, but the other events, you just need to PT for the most part and get your cardiovascular um, endurance up and get your core strength up so you're able to perform well. But the ball throw, you need to throw some balls. Otherwise, you're gonna struggle. And I, I'm starting to practice throwing the ball now, so hopefully I get my score up to resemble the rest of the, you know, my uh, performance on the ACFT. So the stand power throw is an event that you're definitely gonna need to practice for. The next event is the hand release push-ups, which as we discussed in the beginning of the video, initially it was supposed to be the T push-up, and then we transitioned over to the release push-up. Now we're back to the T push-ups. There are many rumors why that's the case. One of them was due to lower back, uh, risk to lower back injuries. But whatever the situation may be, as of July of 2019, until the regulation changes again, it's the T push-up. And as you can see here, the regulations for the T push-up stipulates that your index fingers are supposed to be within the outer edges of your shoulder blade, of your shoulders, and that the starting position is the down position where your leg is straight out, your knees off the ground, and your foot at a 90 degree angle and no further than the width of your greatest foot. That means your greater needs to put his or her foot in between your feet and it cannot be wider than that. To perform one repetition, you will push up, you will come back down, you will open your arms all the way out, back in, and that counts as one repetition. When you go back up again, that will be the beginning of your second repetition and so on and so forth. The spring drag carry is, is something that you just need to get used to. Um, you start at the prone position, and then from there, you're given the command, set, go, and then you start sprinting 25 meters, you, you touch hand foot on the line, you run back, and then you start dragging the sled when you're dragging a sled, you push, pull it all the way up to 25 meter mark, the entire sled needs to cross the line. And then you turn around and you come back 25 meters. And let me tell you right now, out of all the people that I saw performing, executing that task, halfway coming back on a drag, you start reevaluating your military career on whether or not this is for you. Because it is definitely challenging, uh, especially for those that are trying to perform well. And then after you're done with the drag, you do the side shuffle where your feet, uh, you're, you're facing one of the sides of the lane and you're pretty much doing the side shuffle where your feet can touch, but they cannot cross over each other. And then once you get to the 25 meter mark, hand and toes need to touch. And then you shuffle back facing the same direction in which you went in. So if you're facing the left side, you come back facing the same side. If you face the right side, you get the point. Once you cross the line, then you got to carry. And those are the two kettlebells that you carry. There are two forms that is recommended to carry. One is straight on, the way that we normally carry the kettlebell. The other one is a forward grip, where you're grabbing the kettlebell uh, forward of the handle. And the, the theory is that as you're running, the kettlebell is not swinging as much and you have more control. The next one is the leg tuck. This right here is gonna get people as well. Uh, 
I think this is that event similar to the current APFT push-ups where some graders are gonna be more lenient than others and not gonna follow regulation to the T. And then when soldiers go to schools and they're required to pass an ACFT, they're gonna get their feelings hurt when they realize they didn't perform what they were expected to perform because they were never taught the proper way. Proper way to do the ACFT leg tuck is that you are fully on a down position where pretty much your biceps are touching your ears all the way to down position. And you're not kipping, you're not swinging. So if you're a crossfitter and you're used to doing the kipping pull-ups, you need to stop that because the strict leg tuck is what's in order here. You are required to be facing the direction of the bar, not sideways. We had several soldiers that had an issue with keeping their body facing the direction of the bar. They're saying that their body is designed in a way that they can't, you know, they're facing sideways. But then after further analysis, they just realized that they didn't have the proper muscular strength right here to be able to hold themselves. And after further analysis, they realized they could hold themselves. It just took a little bit more effort. But that is the leg tuck in a nutshell. Um, you will be pulling yourself up where your elbows are touching either your knees or your thighs. And then you are coming down all the way to the starting position, which is pretty much your biceps touching your ears. None of this halfway down with your arms slightly bent or your shoulders are still holding your weight up a little bit. Your shoulders are not fully released. You will notice the difference. Starting position is not, is not this. Starting position is pretty much this right here where your shoulders are released and your arms are all the way up. Uh, the run, this was the event that I was most concerned about. I thought I was gonna lose a lot more time than I actually did. I performed about a minute slower than I normally would have had I given 100%. On average, soldiers ran about a minute to two minutes slower than it normally did with the exception of one soldier who ran at the exact same pace as he normally does and he came in in the 13s or 12s. Uh, but then again, that soldier went a lot more cautious on all the other events where he was saving energy for the end and obviously a show because he had a lot more gas uh, to run at the end but everybody else for the most part lost a minute or two in their run for you to be a administrator of the acft as the ncoic or the oic you need to be at least a acft level two certified uh, for you to be a acft level three certified which is the top uh, certification level you need to go to massive fitness trainer and get your Ma massive fitness trainer certification and then you go to acft master fitness trainer i don't know what it's called but you essentially get your level three certification there also a level two can certify a level three can certify level twos and level ones a level two can certify level ones and as a level one you can only grade an event if you are not certified whatsoever you are not authorized to take part in grading or administering the ACFT. That is a big change. The other thing about the ACFT is that it's highly recommended for the folks to be identified prior to that are taking the ACFT and that are grading the ACFT. The reason for that is because you're only authorized four tests a soldier per grader. So you need to get the exact number of graders that are certified as level ones to be able to grade the ACFT. Those days of just having people show up last minute is almost non-existing. The other reason why you need to have those people identified is because the night before, the day before the ACFT, you need a crew to set up the ACFT because there are so many lanes that you need to set up based on the number of people that are taking the ACFT and the equipment that you need to put up there uh, in preparation for and requires a lot of weights, location of the connects versus location of the training area. All those things will dictate how long it'll take for you to set up. Honestly, it'll probably take about an hour. As you get better at it and you have designated ACFT locations, you may be able to do it within 30 minutes. But nevertheless, it's gonna take a little bit and all these things need to be pre-coordinated. The third thing about the ACFT and identifying the people ahead of time is that we no longer go over the detailed instructions of how to take the ACFT. So if you are tasked to take the ACFT, 
you will be emailed or handed written instructions on how to perform each event. During the ACFT, you are given safety brief for a couple of minutes, explain that you guys are taking the ACFT, and then you begin. If you don't know how to perform the task, and, or you perform it correctly, that's on you. you Fail that event, moving on. So those are the major changes with the ACFT, and they're gonna continue changing how these th uh, the, this thing may be administered or the task is performed. Just get ready for it, because you don't wanna be surprised when 2021 comes around. I don't know, overall, I think it's a good thing what we're doing. There are some hurdles that, we, that we're gonna have to overcome, such as having certified people to run the events. That's one of the biggest hurdles. The other biggest hurdle is the equipment, especially in remote locations. The other struggles are gonna, are gonna be the people that have no core strength and not able to do even a single leg tuck, which I saw uh, during the time that I took the ACFT and I was not good. I say the ball throw is, only, is the only event that requires technique. Everything else, there's no hacks to it. You either are physically fit to perform that task or you're not physically fit to perform that task. You may be able to shave off a couple of seconds off of your spring drag carry, um, you know, with proper technique, but really it's either you have the strength to, to perform the task or you don't. Uh, and also you may be able to knock out several more push-ups once you figure out the flow of the T push-up. But other than that, you just need to be overall physically fit. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe and follow me on social at Part-Time First Sergeant so we can continue this conversation. Thank you.